My name is Sarah, and some of you know me as the Paris Quiz Mistress. I host Trivia Nights in Paris, and I'm a lifelong trivia addict. My obsession has led me to meet lots of cool and nerdy people from around the world. And this podcast is a chance to find out how my trivia pals got into this weird and wonderful world of quizzing and why we continue to torture ourselves with it. So play along when we put our knowledge to the test and try to stump each other with our best zingers. Stay tuned for lots of trivia and nerdery. Let's geek out together. I had fun recording this episode because Mo is someone who's been coming to my quizzes for quite a while and we are friendly, but we never really have had a chance to talk a lot because I'm always hosting the quizzes. So this was a really great opportunity to get to know him better. And uh, quiz questions, they're a little bit outside of my wheelhouse, to be honest. We had um, some geopolitics in there. So we also we also had some sports. So like way more sports heavy than I'm usually used to doing. But as you know me, you know, sports trivia is not just like straight up sports trivia rarely. So a little something for everyone. Um, there's also uh, some good hip hop trivia and of course some food questions. And uh, we get some Arabic lessons as well. Enjoy this episode with me and Mo. Hello, Mo. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Glad to have you here. Thanks. How are you? <laughs> you know, I thought we've outlawed that question for 2020. <laughs> People have adopted, how are you holding up? Yeah. Someone gave me... um what's your favorite dog that you've seen recently that's like a new that's like what they're trying out for how how are you instead <laughs> i'm more of a cat person but <laughs> anyways so we all know how we're all doing right yeah i'm curious how how you stumbled upon my pub quizzes and kind of how you got into quizzing in general um could t- take us back mo take us back so uh yeah it was Six years ago, there was a meetup, and the meetup was called uh, New in Paris. I oh, think. it's from that. Okay. Exactly. And I have been in Paris for like a couple of months by that time, and I was really looking for like an activity, something fun to do. So uh, I signed up, and the theme of that meetup was quizzing. And yes, it was a very nice a bit scary in the beginning for me so it was really my first quiz in paris back in 2014 so yeah i i'm happy to say i was one of the early adopters of 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 the quiz yeah yeah i remember so now it's it's all coming back to me right so you originally started coming to the quizzes at the the bar that shall not be named um but no i remember because i first got into meetup because um exactly with that new in town group um yes but the organizer is so nutty. But anyways, I'm glad that you made it. And I'm glad that you've like fully converted to one of my my people. May I? May I be so bold as to call you one of my people? Yeah, I mean, it's all about brand loyalty. So as the brand evolved, as the quiz came to its current form. So yeah, I'm really happy to be one of the guys who kind of started. Like we were there, started in the bar that shall not be named now we're here kind of so yeah no i'm i'm really happy it's been six years going strong amazing so you never quizzed before you stumbled upon this this new in town group well funny enough i did give some quizzes but it was more in a corporate event so of course it wasn't the laid back quiz format that we all love uh it was mainly in several companies where i used to work before so i would give professional trainings but the problem with professional training is that people get so bored. People will be playing Candy Crush at the time or Angry Birds, swipe right and left over Tinder, etc., etc. So what I did is I started introducing quizzes or trivia as breaks within the trainings just as a way to get people involved, like to wake them up. Come on, guys, I have a question, etc., etc. So I've quizzed colleagues at work. But no, nah, I think my first experience in quizzing was back in school. And it was in French, of all languages. Of all it, language. was, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a format of uh, question pour un champion. 
very similar to what Julien Lepers has successfully done on French TV for, for a very long time. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Where, where did you grow up? Uh, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Okay. But you're, you, you're Lebanese, right? Exactly. Okay, good. That, that'll become um, important later. <laughs> I hope. And so you said you've been in Paris since 2014? Yeah, end of 2013, beginning of 2014, exactly. Okay, and you came here for, for, for a job? I did my master's in Normandy, so I was there in 2012. And yeah, I, I mean, classic. Finished, finished university, came to Paris for an internship, ended up in La Défense, looking at skyscrapers at night. And then, yeah, I just settled in. Here I am. Amazing. Yeah, no, it, it's been nice to have you around all these years because um, in the, as the, you know, English language pub scene... <laughs> Um, in Paris, you, you see a lot of people come and go um, over the years. So, no, I'm very, very pleased that you stuck around. Merci. <laughs> Amazed. I wanted to ask you, like, you give such a cool, cool and calm uh, figure um, when you're doing the quiz. But have you ever lost your cool? Like, have you ever lost your shit in a quiz, like with a team or a team member? I'm really curious to find out. Um, yeah, no. So the so the worst moments are when you know that you're wrong there have been times when I've been straight up wrong and it's awful like this one time I yeah it was so it was a question about Olympic host cities and I there was a t there were two teams it was like a, a bunch of French guys one of whom became a very good friend of mine afterwards <laughs> but um and then like a team of like these uh, these Australian girls and um they were neck and neck going into like the last round or whatever and then there, it was the deciding question was this like olympic host cities question and i was it was something like name all the olympic host cities that start with a and i i didn't realize that antwerp in french is envers mm -hmm. and i so i marked it wrong for the french guys and it was actually like the deciding point. <laughs> oh. And so I had to like do a mea culpa. And then I was like, okay, who gets the free drinks? And it was like such a mess. And like they just, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was carnage. Um, yeah. Another time I can think of is like, so usually if teams are cheating, it's like super obvious and it's like really easy to shame them. <laughs> into like admitting that they cheated and like don't do it again and like come back to the quiz but don't cheat and like you know you're not going to get a prize if you cheated but this one team they kept I don't actually think they were cheating but the rule is like you can't have your phones out and they were they kept having their phones out and I kept telling them to put them away or I was going to take away points and like you know it just got like one two three warnings and I was just like okay you're done and at the end I was just like you're disqualified and they got mad they like came up to the bar and they were so mad and I just like I'd never experienced that before where like there was a team that would they were just so like insubordinate <laughs> like it was really it was so it was so weird because usually when a team's cheating like I just like and I go over and I'm like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And then they're very ashamed. And <laughs> that's how it goes. And it's fine. Um, or if someone has their phone out during questions, if they're not, you know, if they're new, if they're not used to it, you know, I usually try to do like one public shaming in round <laughs> one. You've witnessed this. Um, <laughs> Many times. <laughs> yeah. And then that usually like fixes it for the whole time you know and like you, some people have their phones out but they're usually not doing very well but like I couldn't like this one time it was like there was a team that's actually like they could have won but they wouldn't put their phones away and I don't think they were looking up answers but they were just you gotta you gotta play by the rules you know so they I couldn't have them win anyways it was very frustrating there is something very liberating about spending a couple of hours on a quiz without having to play with your phone. I really think we miss that, especially like with millennials always fixed on their phone. We're always looking at our screens. And I really feel it's really, there's something liberating about not having to type on your phone. There's, there's still a nice classic um, feeling of nostalgia when you just have a pen and a paper. And I think 
that feeling or that sensation, if I if I dare to say, oh, if I can put some French in there, you may. I, yeah, I think we really appreciate that, and I can I can say for most of the people who go to the quiz, there's something really nice about that feeling. It's like you're going back to school, but you're hanging out with some cool people, but you're a grown up now, but at the same time. You know, it's just yeah, it's it's liberating, and I and I think it's one of the it's one of the fun aspects of the quiz. Oh, that's nice to hear. I've been trying to recreate that experience with the the lockdown quizzes, but it's definitely less fun. Well, yeah, but you know, you're harnessing the power of technology to keep in touch with people, and I think at these in these moments, it's it's really important because you still have something to look forward to, even though it's online. It's like a nice show that you wanna listen to etc etc so it's it it's still good for mental health to have something to look forward to especially when you're when you're spending most of your time indoors yeah no i mean and I, I, yeah thanks i look forward to it too <laughs> to be <laughs> honest but it's just not you know it, there's nothing like the feedback of a room you know like i i really like hearing it when people when a question's like particularly tricky and like you can kind of tell by the feeling in the room how long people are spending on it so you know when to go on to the next question and I'm just like I'm just flying blind you know when I'm when I'm doing the the virtual quizzes should we get into the quizzing yes I'm ready you're re- are you sure you're ready born ready <laughs> amazing I love I love the enthusiasm all right so mo here is your first question in september 2020 sotheby's conducted its first ever auction dedicated to coveted hip-hop items the plastic crown worn by which rapper in the 1997 king of new york photograph sold for nearly six hundred thousand dollars this has to be the notorious big correct yeah <laughs> good job all right good so we're gonna go with um another hip-hop question if that's all right with you sure so next question although hamilton was inspired by lots of music across genres one of the most direct references to an existing work is a thomas jefferson lyric in cabinet battle number one The lyric goes, such a blunder, sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder. And then Madison goes, why he even brings the thunder. Name the title and artist of the original work, please. Oh, this is, this takes me places. (laughs) Where? Uh, I think, isn't it Grandmaster Flash? It is. I can't remember the title, though. The message. Yeah, you got it. (laughs) Woohoo! Good job. Okay, (laughs) next question. Will Ferrell could tell you which Alabama town boasts the longest NASCAR oval track? Will Ferrell. Uh, Is it Talladega? That's correct. Yeah, he was in the movie. Yes. <laughs> the Legend of Ricky Bobby. Correct. <laughs> Ricky Bobby, why am I saying it in a French way? Ricky Bobby. Yeah, Ricky Bobby. I have a couple more sports questions, which is very out of character for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, but it's all, it's all for you. The people have claimed and we have obtained. <laughs> all right, next. Which Premier League team is named for a 14th century military hero whose death was fictionalized by Shakespeare in Henry IV, Part One? I might have come across this question before. I'm trying to remember. A 14th century hero. It has to be, it has to be Tottenham Hotspur. That's right. Yeah, White Hart Lane, North London. Yep. <laughs> if you say so. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I like a sports question when it's also not a sports question, you know. Yeah. Um, I got to give a hat tip to Ken Jennings for that one. My uh, eternal trivia hero. 
we used to get Jeopardy in the UAE, by the way. It was televised and it was, yeah, it was it was part of my childhood growing up. So, yeah, no, same. All right. I have another I have another sports question for you. <laughs> um, it's another football question. Hopefully this might be a little bit challenging. Yeah. So uh, the Juventus Football Club has won the Champions League twice. These wins were in 1985 and 1996. And each time they scored only a single goal. Can you name the two players who have scored a goal for Juventus in these finals? Okay. Oh, God, I've seen them lose so many finals. Okay, so in 1985, Michel Platini scored the winning penalty. And in 1996, it was one all in regular time. And I, if I remember correctly, it was Fabrizio Ravanelli. No, it was Gianluca Vialli who scored the penalty. I'm going to need a final answer. I'm going to go with Vialli. Ah, uh, you that was it was the uh, Ravinelli. Oh snap! I missed that. Oh my god, uh. my favorite team. Yeah, I hesitated. I hesitated. <laughs> no, always go, always go with your gut. Always go with the first. Yeah, it was Ravinelli. Um, so I I must admit I also outsourced that question because it's a sports question. Come on, I had Fred write that one for you. Ooh. Everyone, everyone knows Fred. Everyone to know Fred is to love him. So, oh, definitely, we thank him for that. Yeah. So, uh, Michel Platini was the easier one, 1985, and Fabrizio Ravinelli uh, was the trickier one. Yeah. So pl- he played for Marseille, famous for his white hair. Famously, tripped himself during a game against PSG, resulting in a penalty. <laughs> Yeah, that was I I remember when that scandal broke. Do you? Yeah, definitely. When was that? I think it was in in 97 or 98 where he basically put he put one foot over the other foot and just like pretended to fly and yeah, he he completely faked that penalty and it was yeah, such a big scandal in Europe, so but anyways, it's Ravenelli, so. This is why I can't stand football. Because it's just like, it, for me, like, it, it could be a good sport if it wasn't for all the crybaby stuff. <laughs> You're referring to Neymar. <laughs> he perfected the art of crying on the pitch. <laughs> I mean, just like, it, it's just, it's just dumb. Yeah, players these days dive a lot. So, yeah, I can, I can imagine why, I, I mean, I can imagine why so many people prefer rugby. Like, when I came to France, I was so excited. Yeah, France. Uh, the football everyone loves football and everyone i talked to back in normandy it's like no uh, football uh, everyone uh, is a uh, faking uh, we prefer uh, rugby and i was like ah okay so yeah that was that yeah a lot of people don't like that in the sport so i mean i sort of get it but like whatever i mean i was excited i was excited when france won the world cup that was exciting Everyone gets excited for the World Cup. It 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 it's beyond boundaries. It's beyond the sport itself. So it's like an interplanetary event of some sort. So yeah. Well, yeah. The the spectacle, like the the culture, the cultural spectacle was is attractive. Yeah. And all the trivia you can get after every tournament. I do. But that's yeah. The story. I do like <laughs> World Cup trivia for sure. For sure. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's up there with Olympics trivia. You know, it's just good trivia, except for Anvers, Antwerp. (laughs) (laughs) Re-traumatizing. Okay, I have a few more questions that are not sports. Hit it. All right. She may be more associated with her Latin American country of origin, but what musical artist, whose name is Arabic for thankful, is half Lebanese on her father's side? Oh, this has to be uh, this. Uh, well, her her hips don't lie, so that should be Shakira. Yes, thankful, very thankful. Exactly for that answer, Shakira. Also very associated with World Cup trivia. Exactly, yeah. She's married to uh, she's married to Gerard Pique, who was a football player who plays for Spain and for Barcelona. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a footballing connection there somewhere. Drat! Thought we were over that. Um, and next question, 
at the 2011 White House Correspondents' Dinner, Obama jokingly released his secret birth video in response to attacks regarding his birthplace. What cartoon did he show? This is very funny. I, I watched that video a few days ago. It was The Lion King. Yes. I, I, to be honest with you, I saw the Seth Meyers one, the Joel McHale one from 2014, and uh, the Michelle Wolf one from 2018 recently. Michelle Wolf just shut it down, didn't she? Literally. Oh, uh, yeah. The president wasn't there, but you know. She, she was too good was the problem. She was too good. She was really good. She was really funny. I have one last, um, it's not one question, but it's a little bit of a segment. I'm going to name a language, and I want you to tell me which country has the most speakers of, of that language. No, I'm hoping to stump you at, like, at least once. You, I mean, like, because the, the Juventus question you, you pretty much got, but here we go. So... Um, which country has the most speakers of Romanche? Uh, Romanche. Uh, Romania? That's incorrect. Oh. It would be Switzerland. Ah. It's the fourth. Yes. Yeah, the fourth language of Switzerland. La Suisse Romande. How did I not get that? Mm. Yeah. Next one, Pashto. Uh, that would be Afghanistan. Correct. Next one, Canada. Canada. K A N N A D A. Oh, uh, can I get a hint on this one? Like a continent? Um, it is not Canada. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. Um, Asia. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Philippines. No. Nope. nope, that's India. Oh, okay. It's the language spoken in the state of Karnataka, I believe. That's where Bangalore is. Because I remember I went there and I was like, you got to keep saying Canada. I don't know why. <laughs> this is tougher than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three more. Three more. Next one. Cebueno. Um, Cebueno. I'm going to go with South Africa. <laughs> no, that's the Philippines. It was time for the Philippines. Oh, man. From Cebu. Um, I'm being played around uh, here. I'm really glad I could stump you. <laughs> yeah, I've been stumped. All right. The next two. Well, I don't want to say I think they're easy because I don't want to like make you feel bad if you don't get them. But um, maybe easy. You're I don't know. We'll see. Next one. Keshua. Um, Peru? Correct. Peru. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Finally. And last one, Yoruba. Yoruba. Uh, is th would that be Nigeria? That would be Nigeria. Good, good job. Yes. The Yoruba people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mo. That's all I got for you. Is, is, it, uh, is it time to turn the tables? Yes, the tables shall be turned. The quiz mistress is in the hot seat. Okay, so the way I've divided these questions is that it kind of starts very serious, but then as we go along, it will be more fun. My goodness. Is, that, is this format okay with you? I, it's going to have to be, isn't it? Question number one. Sarah, the question is about the OSCE Minsk Group, which was created in 1992. Now, the aim of this group was to encourage a peaceful, negotiated resolution to the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia over the Nagorno-Karabakh region. Now, the group is headed by France, Russia, and the United States. Here's the question. Can you name two other countries which form part of the Minsk group? Yeah. Um, no. I mean, I can try. Um, so, well, one of a hint for you is in the name of Minsk. One woman's erotic journey from Milan to Minsk. Okay, Belarus. Correct. 
Belarus. So you said it was Russia, the United States, and what, what other country? France. France. And, of course, Armenia and Azerbaijan, because right. they're parts of the conflict. You mentioned Belarus, which is correct. I need one more country. You said 1993? Uh, 1992. Okay. Yugoslavia. That is incorrect. It could have been one of the following four countries. <laughs> Finland, Germany, Italy, Sweden, and Turkey. That's five. Five countries. Drat. Yeah. I thought of Turkey because that's sort of over there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually a contemporary question because, as you know, the conflict is still going on between Azerbaijan and Armenia. And, like, Belarus isn't doing so hot either. Nah, not really. But, you know, they're the hosts, so... Okay, let's go to question number two. The group of eight, also known as a G8, as the G8, was an intergovernmental political forum from 1997 until 2014. It had formed from incorporating an extra country into the G7, but that country was disinvited. Name that country. Oh, man. These are things that I should know, and I'm going to sound real dumb if I don't. Um, what are you doing to me? It, like, was it was it like China? You're very close. How is that close? Russia? Exactly. Okay. Russia is the right answer. So the, it used to be the G8, then Russia was disinvited in 2014, so it became G7. Okay. Yeah, this rings a bell. Sarah, we're going to get into the fun part of the question. Yay. Yay. So, Sarah, what I'm going to do is, because I really miss the music round, I'm going to get a bit, let's get a bit musical oh on this question. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to fill in the blanks. Very famous song, famous lyrics. I'm, su I'm sure you shouted these lyrics or you sung them somewhere. Fill in the blanks. Are you ready? Yes. They see me rolling, they blank. Patrolling, they're trying to blank me, riding blank. So we could go uh, one of two ways here. Um, yeah. Because you're a quiz nerd, I'm going to go with the Weird Al version, white and nerdy. <laughs> That's the Weird Al Yankovic version. Yes. That is correct. <laughs> Even though you also have the chameleon air version. Oh, chameleon air. Yeah. I, I think so the Weird Al version charted higher than the original. I, you are correct. <laughs> exactly. So the original one was they see me rolling, they hate and patrolling, they're trying to catch me riding dirty. But yeah, the Weird Al Yankovic version was the white and nerdy. So yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give you that one. Bravo. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Which famous obscure English cartoon was themed on two bandits having the first and last name of a famous French author? So it was two bandits, two French bandits in this English cartoon, and their names are based on a very famous French author. So how can it be famous and obscure? Ah, uh, no. The author is famous. The cartoon is obscure. It, it just ran for a few episodes and then it was dumped. I don't know. Was it Victor and Hugo? Well done. Thank you. Good context, please. Vic Victor and Hugo. Okay. So the next question is pretty simple. Let's see how it goes. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so next question. The French sometimes refer to their dog as their kleps. Kleps. T'as vu mon kleps? Uh, J'ai acheté un kleps. J'ai pris un kleps. Which language is the word kleps borrowed from? I've never heard this. Um, is it... I mean, I know we have a lot of Arabic words in French. I'm gonna, so I'm mm -hmm. going to go with Arabic. Exactly. 100%. Kleps comes from the word kilab, which is the plur plural of Kelb, which is dog. So yeah, it comes from Arabic. Yay. There was a question um, on this quiz league recently. Um, it was about the origins of, of a math term. And I was like, well, algebra, because a lot of like words that we use are like, that come from Arabic start with like al. 
I was like, oh, algebra. Yeah. So algebra, yeah, Arabic. There you go. Yeah. And algorithm as well. So, And I think this was one of your quiz questions, I think. I don't remember. Maybe. Yeah, I I think, yeah. I think I did well, yeah. <laughs> Bragging rights. You, you, earned, you earned it. You earned it. Okay. The next set of questions are culinary. Hmm, food. Yes. Are you ready? Ah, yes. I'm hungry. Okay. So... The world-famous Kentucky Fried Chicken chain, KFC, is called PFK or PFK in Quebec. What does the PF in PFK stand for? Poulet frit. Woohoo! That is correct. Uh, Poulet frit, Kentucky. I remember thinking that was hilarious when I went to Montreal. Yeah, I mean, the way the way they turn French, like, I, I don't know Happy Meal was Joyeux Festin. Wow, I didn't either. But... <laughs> that's amazing Sarah you've tried so hard and now you have come so far that's a Linkin Park reference you are now on the last question wow. the French love their tabbouleh mm -hmm. but they usually prepare it or make it with bulgur or semoule the original Lebanese tabbouleh is based on which green herb oh oh I've had this is it I mean is it that um that really tasty Lebanese uh, parsley salad. Hundred percent, you're on the money. It's parsley. Yes, I love that stuff. It's it's chopped parsley. Chopped parsley is the main ingredient in the original Lebanese tabbouleh. You can imagine how frustrated I was when I came to France and everyone was like, ah, tabbouleh, and there was like semoule all over. Guys, no, original tabbouleh is made with parsley. So yeah. okay, I know that salad but i didn't realize that that was like the real tabbouleh okay because i mean I've, i've lived in france so i think of tabbouleh i think of like you go to franc prix and there's like semoule and there's the raisins in it and yeah exactly <laughs> variants variants they've changed the recipe um it's like it's, i feel the same way when when with what the french try to pass off as bagels it's very <laughs> on, bagel on to, it's shame shameful <laughs> bagel yep Well, you, that was, I mean, I think we can definitively say that you won. Can we? <laughs> But really? I mean, I, you know, I wrote, I wrote you some softballs. I wanted you to have fun with it. You know, clearly the feeling wasn't mutual. <laughs> I don't, we won't get this opportunity every day. So I kind of, you know, I, I took my time with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you had some stumpers. That was good. No, it was good. It was good. I got, I got a couple. I got a couple. I yeah. learned I learned some things as well. So I really enjoyed my time today and I learned a thing or two about you, about the quiz and about trivia. Yay. I hope you liked that episode with Mo. I, I did a little fact checking and the chameleonaire version of Raiden reached number one on the US uh, Billboard Hot 100. Well, Weird Al's white and nerdy parody only reached number nine but i think in the collective consciousness we remember the weird owl version more no i don't know i think that might just be a reflection on uh the type of people that i hang out with if you want more trivia from me you can follow paris quiz mistress on instagram or facebook You can also sign up for my newsletter. You can come play along with one of my live quizzes, uh, either virtually or at the pub, whichever the, uh, the current moment calls for. And until next time, stay nerdy and keep quizzing. As in the first lockdown, you have the case of people coming, oh, I'm just going to go away to my beautiful summer home in Normandy. Yeah, of course. And I'm just going to talk to you and I'm going to run some conference calls from my beautiful garden. Mm. Where they're like, um, les oiseaux chantent, les brebis. And like other people's like, yeah, I'm kind of in my studio with like my wife and two kids. And yeah, so inequality. We need, we need some barrio, like we need some Obama inspiration. If you live in a place where you are surrounded with kids, <laughs> you need to have like, you know, we need to kind of have that hope, the hope message, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. But like, yeah, like. If you have a job, nah. <laughs> <laughs>